All right, what would happen if you gave up all grains for two weeks, 14 days? That's what we're gonna talk about today. And yes, I'm talking about the breads, pasta, the cereal, the crackers, the biscuits, the waffles, the pancakes, the muffins, the donuts, et cetera, et cetera, as well as the rice and the corn. Now, if we compare giving up sugar for two weeks to giving up grains for two weeks, I really think you're gonna have way more benefit giving up the grains for two weeks, simply because what these grains do to your gut. Not only do you have this spike in blood sugar, but you also have a lot of inflammation. All right, let's unpack this topic. What's a grain? Well, a grain is a seed of grass, okay? Different types of grass. And in a grain, you have three parts. You have the bran, which is the fiber part, which has some B vitamins. You also have the germ part, which has some B vitamins, vitamin E, minerals, and phytonutrients. Then you have what's called the endosperm. Okay, that's where you have all the carbohydrate. This is where you have some more B vitamins, and this is where you have the protein. And I'm talking about gluten, okay, gluten. So very few people are consuming just straight whole grain. Like they don't go and buy this grain and then come home and germinate it, soak it, you know, getting rid of the phytic acid. So that way you don't have something that blocks your minerals. And then they don't uh, then dry it out and then grind it into flour right away and then turn it into bread. That's not what happens. You go to the store and you either buy the product that's already done or you might buy flour. And even if it's whole grain or whole wheat flour, it's been sitting on the shelf for quite some time. Now, the definition of whole grain is any mixture of bran, endosperm, germ, in proportion, one would expect to see intact grain. And the FDA said if it's at least 51% whole grain, it can be considered or defined as whole grain. So you can basically have 49% refined grain with this whole grain, and it's whole grain. So here's the problem as soon as they grind the grain, Okay, they expose it to air and light and oxygen. That right there oxidizes and destroys the delicate fatty acids, the delicate vitamins. This is why back in the 20s and 30s and 40s, they started to fortify grains. Okay, they started to add some so called nutrients back into the grains because. Quite a few people were ending up with uh, diseases like pellagra, which is a severe B3 deficiency, uh, and beriberi, which is a severe B1 deficiency. And I think I recall a report, even in the early 1900s, um, there were like 7,000 people who died of pellagra, which is the B3 deficiency, because of these grains. So they ended up adding in um, some synthetic version of vitamins back into this grain to try to uh, bring it back to where it was because in the refining process, you end up stripping out a lot of the nutrition. So they put back in iron, B1, B2, B3, folic acid, and calcium. And uh, you can imagine the quality of those vitamins are definitely probably the lowest list. They're made from petroleum and they just stick them in there. Not too impressed with that. The problem is when you eat grains that have been fortified, which it's mainly in America and other, in a few other countries, but certain parts of uh, Western Europe, and I think Italy, don't use this fortification crap. And so this is why when you eat grains in other parts of the world, if you're not in the US, you don't nearly get the bloating. The grain doesn't sit in your gut like a iron weight because there's iron in there, right? Plus they do use a different type of grain as well. But that fortification is uh, not good on your digestive system. So when they actually refine the grain, okay, you end up eating the product. And uh, you actually, if you consume refined grains, you create deficiencies of certain nutrients, okay? And at least two of the primary nutrients that you'll create deficiencies are the B vitamins and the vitamin E complex. Now, you know, they put back in three B vitamins, but what about? all the other B vitamins. These other B vitamins that are not in there that you then become deficient in 
can create a major strain on your heart. Now, you may have not heard of vitamin B4. Uh, there's some interesting research done by Dr. Royal Lee back in the 1940s and even the 50s. But another name for vitamin B4 is adenine, is a critical, critical compound in the regulation of cardiovascular function, both in the coronary artery, as well as in the rhythm of the heart, the neurological pacemaker of the heart. And so if you're deficient in this element, uh, it could put a big strain on not just one part of the heart, several parts of the heart. So giving up grain for two weeks will take some relief off of your heart, both the coronary artery, as well as in the uh, pacemaker of the heart. So the heart can then stay in rhythm much easier. Now let's talk about vitamin E. As far as the heart goes, your vitamin E is very necessary to prevent angina because vitamin E improves the oxygen carrying capacity of the heart tissue by up to 250%. So if you're deficient in vitamin E, the heart has to labor, it doesn't get enough oxygen, and the heart can even form a heart cramp. That's called angina. So when you give up grains for two weeks, you're gonna take a big stress off the heart. All right, the next point I'm gonna bring up is just the simple uh, carbs the refined carbohydrates in these grains. They're huge with a pretty high glycemic index. And, and I'm not even talking about the added sugar to the cereals and all these other grains. I'm just talking about um, where grains are on the glycemic index, okay? Especially refined grains, they are high. So what happens is this grain turns into sugar very quick. It spikes your blood sugar. And now you're going to get all the bad effects of high insulin and high blood sugar. And that's going to be weight gain. That's going to have cognitive problems. You're going to be less smart, less focus, less concentration. You're going to have a lowered mood. You're going to be irritable. You're going to have more anxiety and you're simply going to be tired. Okay. Other than that, you're going to be totally fine. Now, I just want to point out when you consume pasta, it's a little bit different. If you check your blood sugars right after consuming pasta, um, they won't be spiked. It's kind of a delay. Apparently, pasta is more dense, so it takes a while for it to break down. So if you check it within an hour, your blood sugars will be spiked in a major way. So just because it doesn't get spiked right away doesn't mean it's not going to spike later. All right, the next point I want to bring up is this thing called phytic acid. What is it? It's a protective um, chemical that seeds use to keep a seed from sprouting, okay? And when you consume grains with phytic acid because you didn't germinate them or soak them, okay, what happens is you now are going to have a difficult time absorbing minerals like zinc, like iron, like calcium, things like that. So this is why grains um, inhibit your ability to absorb minerals, trace minerals. So by getting off grains for two weeks, guess what? No phytic acid. And you finally get to absorb these wonderful trace minerals. That's going to be cool. And there's a whole chain reaction of positive things that are going to happen just from that. All right. The next point I'm going to bring up is the reduction of gut inflammation when you stop eating grains. Why? Because of gluten. Gluten is one of the most inflammatory things for the gut that you can consume. So many people have a gluten intolerance, okay? They just can't tolerate it or they have a severe allergy to gluten. It's a protein. And even if it doesn't directly affect the gut, it affects other parts of your body. There's a lot of information on that. I will put a link down below, but it's going to affect the pain in your gut. It's gonna affect bloating, distension. You're gonna feel like you're pregnant after you eat grains. That was me. You're going to have pain in your stomach. That was me. And anything that's going on with the gut is going to be going on with the brain. So if you have gut inflammation, guess what? It's going to affect your brain. You're going to have brain fog. You're going to have all sorts of uh, behavioral issues and mood problems and anxiety and even depression. The list goes on and on and on. That's not all. We got more. Um, if you don't eat grains, okay, there's no fortification. So we'll have less bloating from that. You're going to feel like, oh, wow, my stomach isn't so bloated. Now, 
also grains are high in omega-6 fatty acids. And those are the things that create inflammation. So guess what? You're gonna have a lot less inflammation, uh, not just in your colon, but through the whole body. So if you have arthritis, chances are that arthritis might actually disappear. All right, number eight, you're going to have less fluid retention. Because these are refined grains usually, okay? Mostly refined grains, uh, refined carbohydrate you're going to hold a lot of fluid. And so an average person is probably holding minimally 13 pounds of excess fluid when they do high carbs. So getting rid of the grains for two weeks, you'll probably lose at least 13 pounds of fluid. That's gonna be cool. Also, you're gonna sleep better. There's gonna be more hormonal balance. There's gonna be less um, effect on the neurotransmitters in your brain, like dopamine. And you're going to just feel calmer you're gonna feel stress-free, okay? And then you're gonna sleep better. Also, and this is interesting, if you have Hashimoto's, which is usually the most common form of hypothyroidism, okay, 90% of people that have hypothyroidism have Hashimoto's, you definitely need to get off grains immediately. Why? Because the gluten in the grain, the protein, can mimic the thyroid and cause what's called molecular mimicry, where your immune system is attacking the thyroid simply because you're eating gluten, okay? So you need to get rid of that. And guess what? Your thyroid's gonna be a lot happier. And that's gonna lead to a whole cascade of wonderful things from just from that. Also, all this inflammation that you have is gonna go away and your immune system will now finally get a chance to work much better. You're going to be running less on glucose and more in ketones. And so you're going to have a cleaner fuel and your immune system loves that. So you'll be less sick as well. And lastly, you're going to be less exposed to something called glyphosate. Glyphosate is the thing they spray grains, unfortunately, even though some of these grains are not even GMO, they still spray them. So less glyphosate means lower risk of cancer. And it also means better digestive health because the glyphosate kills microbes and they can affect your GI as well. So I challenge you to give up grains for two weeks and then write down in the comment section how wonderful your life is because of that. Now, if you haven't seen my other video on giving up sugar for two weeks, I put it right here. Check it out.